what's going on everybody you've reached the nerds rule the world for another episode of the nrw checkpoint of course as usual i am the man webster style the man the voice of fragrance and i'm always joined by my man brian said brian how are you doing today i'm doing okay how about yourself okay i'm all right i'm here i'm functioning uh as they say i still function so yeah. i cannot complain on that <laughs> one it's light in news this week so let's get right into the new releases okay. first up we have headspace shipbreaker which is a space simulation and that's mm -hmm. only on a pc unfortunately in my research i didn't watch the trailer for this one so i can't really give you heads or tails what this is about i just know it's a simulation and it's in mm -hmm. space okay i mean one thing i've noticed i don't know if you noticed we've covered a lot of simulations for the yes. pc over the past couple of weeks yeah. very interesting <laughs> they're fun time passes yes yes they are next up we have nino kuni cross worlds and this is an mmo that's out for pc ios and android we're going to be looking at the trailer for that one uh, a little okay. bit later is that that sort of i guess the common cells shaded sort of art style that we yeah. see a lot of nowadays huh. now the next one's actually one that i was surprised um when I saw it, I'm like, what is this? I'm like, I looked it up like, oh, this looks kind of interesting. And that's Roller Champions for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And it's basically like futuristic roller derby. Oh. But more importantly, it's, it's free to play. So oh, I'm like, wow. oh, okay. Yeah. I will definitely <laughs> check this out um, when it comes out because it looks fun. It looks like it'll be a real fun title, especially for that sort of, um, well, I'm assuming it's cross-play, but we know how PlayStation and Sony does things. Ubisoft, yeah. how to, Ubisoft is, Soft has been in some financial uh, troubles lately, so I don't know if they're paying so they money for cross <laughs> but we shall see. But we're watching the, the trailer for that. Now, Brian, are you uh, like, a, well, I don't, is anybody really a fan of roller derby? Uh, um, I, I'm aware of it. I'll say yeah. that. I, I roller skate, I roller blade. So, I mean, there's that. Yeah, I'm aware of roller derby. I can't say I've ever mm. really been a fan of roller derby. It's like yeah. one of those things that's been, it's like, bef I would say before my time when it was popular, I was maybe a baby. Mm. And then when it kind of had that resurgence, it kind of came and went. And then you yeah. had that Hello Cool J movie, what, that was like <laughs> early 90s, whenever that happened, midnight, whenever it was. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but it never really gained popularity like that again since its heyday in the 70s. So I'm really interested in this because, one, there aren't any games like this on the market, really. Um, right. So that's the one, you know, we always talk about being unique and originality. And there aren't any roller derby S type games on the market. And especially for this to be free to play mm -hmm. and for it to look as nice as it does, even on last gen system, which is still weird to say. Um it looks really, really cool. I'm surprised, though, it's not on the Switch. So that's probably one oh, of the things mm -hmm. I am uh, most curious about, especially considering Ubisoft's mm -hmm. uh, financial strains that you <laughs> think you want to put it on, like, the biggest selling platform, especially with free-to-play. Right. right. That I don't make those business decisions there. <laughs> Maybe we should, you know? That sounds like a, a solid idea to me. Yeah. I don't Maybe know. it's coming. I didn't read anything about it coming soon to the Switch, but you never know. Yeah, they the switch is uh you know they they tend to to focus on the switch last and you know see which how is it does on really the big consoles well, that's yeah. worked really well for EA. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm interested to see what this game is like when we watch yeah. the trailer later. Yeah, because I'm, I'm interested in playing when it comes. I out. agree with you. Roller derby didn't necessarily catch in my world, but I've been aware of it. I like to skate. I like to. Um, I like sports, so you know, maybe this would be one that I'm interested in. I always said if I had opportunity to do road derby, I would try it just mm -hmm. because I mean I know how to skate, but um yeah, I'm interested. That, that's gonna be interesting. That yeah, sounds good. I'm looking forward to seeing that trailer one. later. So next up we have Sniper Elite Five. First of all, I didn't know it was one through four. Um, yeah. <laughs> and this is on uh, PlayStation Family Systems, Xbox Family Systems, and PC. This is an action shooter. Apparently, okay. Sniper Elite 5 is a big deal. It's a big game franchise. I didn't know um, because this is one of the premier first-party titles that's dropping onto Game Pass for uh, this mm -hmm. month. So this, this is, I guess, we on Game Pass tomorrow at, at the time of this recording. So if you're interested in it, you know, mm -hmm. go for it. <laughs> it's Sniper Elite. 
Yeah, I'm not. See, my thing with Sniper Elite is I come from the era of, uh, I don't know, the earlier days of Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Camping was not, uh, was frowned upon <laughs> right. in the game. I feel like Sniper Elite, that's mostly what you have to do, camp and kind of shoot and stuff. Slow games, slow shooters like that, I'm never really interested in, but Sniper Elite has made it to five. So obviously there's a um you know a fan base for it hopefully they'll enjoy the fifth installment because i didn't know about a four three or two i probably (laughs) right i probably heard of sniper elite before i think they made a transition onto mobile platforms if i'm not mistaken and one of the you know one of the generations but five i wouldn't doubt it yeah because i mean it's simple you shoot it's kind of weird being in a DMV and, and, and Kuya P certainly understands this. Being of a certain <laughs> age, when you hear sniper in video games, it's, it's one thing that kind of comes up into your head, which isn't that pleasant. So it's like, ooh, don't get reminded of that too often. Right. right. <laughs> so, but it's it not. is what it is. <laughs> so that's it for Sniper Elite 5. Uh, we don't have a trail for that. But again, that's if you got Game Pass, it's dropping on Game Pass and there are plenty of trailers out there. Uh, next up is a uh, revisiting and revitalization of a, I won't say classic game franchise, but mm. a pretty popular for his day platforming pr- uh, franchise in the case of Kyle the Kangaroo or Kale the Kangaroo. Yeah, I think it's Kale. Um, Kale. <laughs> and this is for the PlayStation family systems, Xbox family systems, Switch and PC. And it's the platformer. And I didn't realize there were actually four entries into the original series between 2000 and 2005 they were pumping really? them out back then yeah i was like <laughs> okay and then there's also a game like with hopping Hansky. around yeah yeah hopping around exactly <laughs> i never ko kangaroo hmm i never heard of this i heard I of it like... in passing i've never played it uh it okay. was what that was 2000 so that was, I was on my Dreamcast then, so I don't think it was on Dreamcast. So there were a lot of titles mm. I did not play. So that would have originated on probably PlayStation 2 mm. era and GameCube. Because I think GameCube came out like around, and then Xbox as well. I know it was probably right. on Xbox. It was Xbox was what, 01, 02. <laughs> Which would make sense because around that time, platformers were big, but um, Nintendo was pretty much monopolizing that. If it wasn't right. like, Crash, yeah. Man, yeah, Crash, or Spyro, or whatever. Then you was playing platformers like um, Donkey Kong and and yeah. uh, Mario on on you know Nintendo platforms. So maybe it just it was one of those like secondhand. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely. I'm along. I'm pretty sure it was overshadowed. You know, you talking yeah. about you know the classic, especially the PlayStation era with Spyro and Crash and you know Donkey yeah. Kong even. Um, I mean, we played Mario 64 forever. It didn't matter that it came out in 96. That, that game never got old. It still doesn't get old. <laughs> so when it comes to platformers, they were, they were, there are a lot of heavy hitters during that time period that came out. And I could see why KO really went under the radar unless you were really, really looking for it. So right. it'll be interesting to see if this, uh, especially on the Switch, uh, really gets or gains any more momentum and popularity uh, from a, as a nostalgia sort of property. Because you got to mm-hmm. think, it's weird to think that 2000 was 22 years ago I so mean, if you're like 10 playing that you're 32 now <laughs> right yeah. so you know there's a fan base i'm sure that had has fond memories of that and i'm pretty sure they'll pick it up for that and introduce it to their children we'll see because that's that's more of my time i'm 31 so i don't um remember ko at all but gotcha. like i said i was more with the um spirals and the donkey kongs of the situation but then i think about it as well switch did just well nintendo they did just come out with this whole well they upgraded their online situation to include those older games Mm -hmm. so maybe ko will be overshadowed again but (laughs) hopefully not because (laughs) I mean, we want the game to succeed, I guess. Yeah, I hope it's not full price. I hope it's probably like a 39. Yeah. I, I'm not sure because I didn't look it up and I should have, but I, I hope it's like a either 39.99 or 49.99 mm-hmm. uh game. Well, it's mm-hmm. coming out for PS5 and Xbox. Well, we know PlayStation had a $10 chart. We'll see. 
I hope yeah. it's not full price though. Uh, that way, it'll be more of a budget friendly title for people right. to be more inclined to pick it up. Yeah, because I want because it's weird because we, I feel like we don't have a lot of platforms to come out, three D platforms to come out nowadays anymore. Yeah, because technology has evolved so much as far as gaming is concerned that people yeah. i don't know we, there's a lot of focus on battle royales right now Ooh. obviously first person shooters um sports are still taking a big uh you know space in the gaming world right. and then everything else is kind of secondary we don't even i don't know rpgs are still a thing but they're not as heavily focused upon as far as the other other genres i just mentioned right and I feel like because RPG has taken such a massive leap forward as far as technology is concerned, it just doesn't really make sense to do platforms unless it's going to be something handheld like um, on a Switch. Yeah. But then you look at what what's the um, Samurai game that just came out? Uh, Trek to Yoni? Yes. Like styles of, styles of game like that where they're not necessarily 2d but they do have an aesthetic of like a side scroller platform type of vibe mm -hmm. like they do well so i don't know i think yeah. i think platformers in general need to be reimagined and i think that's that's going to take a little bit more time as we try to figure out a healthy medium between where rpgs are now and what they can do as far as platformers are concerned yeah i agree i think that what the last big platformers that came out kind of like a general consciousness uh, mm -hmm. where the Kirby game that came out, which right. obviously it's Nintendo, that's going to ha happen. The <laughs> remake of the SpongeBob game mm -hmm. and the and Crash 4. Mm -hmm. um, I think those like the really big time. A lot of platformers now, and I think because a lot of more uh, smaller companies are, are doing platformers now, a lot of those are like 2D or 2.5D, so they'll end up right. in the, you know, only game passes or the indie shops or what have you. So yeah. I, know, I see that more so, but you don't have these sort of big AAA or even high profile character driven platforms anymore, which is, right. again, people's taste change in games, but it's a little sad simply because with more and more people playing games, like these are games that are, are very much an entryway for most people to get into gaming especially the younger folks yeah so it's, it's sad in that regard but again i understand just how the industry works in that regard yeah i think about um the last platform that i like really invested some time in was probably spirit far and like okay. i said there was some kind of i don't know there was a it's a platformer so there's that yeah. element there but then there was also some reimagining there because it wasn't just platforming it was like oh there's um time management kind of simulation stuff going on where you have to you know tend to certain things in a specific right. amount of time in order for you to progress so like i said i, I don't i don't know it just <laughs> platformers they are they like you said great entryway into right. gaming i just feel like maybe some more thought needs to be put into them it can't yeah, just be I like agree. yeah it can't just be you know shoot or run and slash or whatever like maybe they need to merge with some other type of genres that fit that style of gaming because I, I agree we need platformers to stay yeah. around yeah i agree them. they get I, ways to pass the time i know the simulators are really big right now but like platformers that they're, they're i'd put it this way if it wasn't for platforms i probably wouldn't be into rpgs because it you know the stories that came along with mario and and crash bandicoot or whatever like you know they're endearing and I feel like that's the easiest way to get people hooked on a video game. I agree. You talk about passing the time. The last one platform I've been playing was a uh, new Super Lucky's Tale. Mm -hmm. And exactly. It's it's a fun game. I can just sit down and play. Mm -hmm. um, has a cute little cuddly fox character, which is good for the young <laughs> folks. Right. And it's something good to just to pass the time. And those of us who have been playing platformers all our lives it's easy to go through, but it's just, it's fun and simple. And I think that's re the real appeal for platformers. So yes. I think part of it is as gamers are aging, we've been there, done that. So those right. games don't appeal to us. And, and the right. majority of gamers that are out there plunking out, you know, kids ain't plunking out $500 <laughs> for a system and $70 for a game. They ask so, for Christmas and birthday. <laughs> right, exactly. So 
for the most part, those that are paying for these games are people like us. So we right. don't buy platforms. And I totally understand that. Yeah. But I will say, caveat to that, they have an opportunity with mobile because I yeah. think about um what was the, what was the game where you basically just run and dodge different? <laughs> oh, um, like temple run and whatnot, those sort of yeah, things. Yeah, you have games like that. Those are perfect for the processors and the screens. Well, now processors are ex- incredibly powerful on phones and, and consoles. <laughs> so you could definitely um, focus on that. Kids, especially, always on their phones or whatever. You want to get kids more into gaming. Put a platformer on, on mobile. Make a big one. Instead of mobile gaming being like this, I don't know, entity within itself where they have to create their own games or whatever, studios should reach out and, you know, create specific platforming games that are specifically designed to be played on mobile devices and that are not going to, like, stress the uh, the gamer out. Just casual play. All right. Well, we'll see. You talk about mobile gaming. I think EA, not EA, Take Two just finished the acquisition of Zanga. So we'll see if they start doing something other than Farmville. Mm-hmm. And so. EA as well. They just um, Apex yeah. just went mobile last week, or mm-hmm. and since 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 our last recording, Apex Mobile is like out. There's tons of people playing it. They even put a new character on the game. Like there's opportunities there. Right. We talk about old school gaming. There's nothing, and I mean absolutely nothing. The GOAT. Except for Space Invaders, more old school than (laughs) Pac-Man. And the last release this week is Pac-Man Museum Plus, which is pretty much out for everything. PlayStation platforms, Xbox, Switch, and PC. There's really no genre because it's Pac-Man. Pac-Man is (laughs) Pac-Man. And there are 14 freaking Pac-Man games in this compilation. I was like, goodness gracious. And for me, (laughs) I'll be playing it because it's dropping day one on Game Pass. I'm like, I will will play this when it comes out. The old man in me will come along. And it's funny because my first experience playing Pac-Man wasn't even an arcade. It was that horrible Atari 2600 port when I was like three or four. (laughs) So that's like my first level Pac-Man, that horrible game. And then I played in our game like, Oh, this is great because like my first arcade game that I ever remember playing was Donkey Kong. And of course, okay. every pizza parlor had Donkey Kong. That's exactly where it was right. in a pizza parlor. <laughs> and not 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 Donkey Kong Country for you, you know, younger folks. We're talking about the original with Mario in it. Like, I have to hop over these barrels at this monkey. It's not even Mario. He was jump man. <laughs> yeah, right. We didn't even really have a title back then for him. But Right. I'm, I like Pac-Man is such a staple just in the gaming community, like in general. I had Pac-Man as a kid. I got hand me down to uh, Sega Genesis from my mom. And I had one of the games on that was Pac-Man. I played it for right. hours, hours and hours and hours, beating everybody that could uh, possibly decide to pick up that player two controller next to me. And then I went into arcade one day. And I was like, oh, they have Pac-Man on arcade? lost right. every time couldn't beat anything high score i'm just like trying to get high as i'm like oh what am i Remember, gonna do I they're designed to take your quarters not yeah. to yeah. give you anything else. It's i'm like, at the barber shop just waiting for my turn to get my hair cut like trying to at least just get on this scoreboard so i can like yeah but pac has always this been fun i am pleasantly surprised uh at what Bandai Namco has been doing with Pac-Man over the past few years. Yeah, with they the keep game it up because the the Pac-Man Championship games are really fun and addictive to play. I think really? I have Pac-Man Championship Two um, on my Xbox, and mm-hmm. it is so fun to play. They they've really done some creative things to keep Pac-Man fresh now because for a long time Pac-Man wasn't fresh, and everything they did they. <laughs> turn into a platformer and this and that is like right no just give us pac-man eating ghosts but they've done a really good job and i think uh the pac-man championship is as part of this compilation as well but it is 14 games uh, it's probably retailing for 39.99 that's why all these use retailing but again <laughs> um it's on game pass day one so i will definitely be playing this is actually what my download is going to be for my recording this week of, of the podcast okay. it's just <laughs> you, you can't pac-man is one of those games 
that young and old love it like because it's it's, so simple it's incredibly simple and it's very very fun like to when you eat those power pellets and you see those ghosts light up in fear that's the only thing you want to do is get to the ghost but then you see a fruit come out like oh my god it's a banana coming or some cherries coming like damn should i sacrifice this power pillar that I just scared all these ghosts with, or should I go get that fruit for these extra points? Right. It's it seems like a tough decision, guys, but it's really not, and that's the beauty of it. Yeah, it, it it's is. Like, Pac Man is just <laughs> it's such an amazing gaming experience, and it is one of those things in my life have seen to see young people experience it and just fall in love with it, like I was when I was their age many many mm-hmm. years ago. That's one of the things I love about gaming and particularly like the classics. Um, I won't say that, you know, newer games like Tekken and stuff like that doesn't do it. But you go to some of those arcade classics like Galaga, like Pac-Man. I was about to say. Give those to a child. They will become a gamer for life just like we did. Because it's something so simple and it's so fun and it's so kinetic. You know, maybe not something like Mappy. Mappy is, you know, but... (laughs) <laughs> really a lot of the old school classics that we still go back today as being older older men and women that they just transcend time even space invaders they yeah. just transcend generations and it's so amazing to see that that light spark up in a child's eyes when they're seeing pac-man for the first time or <laughs> gallagher or space invaders and, and it's just it's really amazing so i'm i'm always excited for something like this because having all those different games there even at uh i think pac-man was at 365 or whatever it is where it was like 3d and you're jumping like i remember that in the arcade because that, that was in the bowling alley too my mom was gonna leave when i was in like, <laughs> elementary school middle school and i played that all the time that and ninja Gaiden was right next to it <laughs> <laughs> so this those sort of games and being able to revisit them and see that history at I think is awesome, especially for a, a very reasonable price. And I think that is the first trailer we are getting to today is yeah. Pac-Man Museum Plus. Yeah. They need to bring back Dig Dug also. I really, really enjoy Dig Dug. Oh, that's still available on Xbox via Xbox 5K. <laughs> okay. Like three bucks. Oh, I need to see that on PlayStation now. Dig Dug is Pac-Man Museum Plus includes amazing. 40 titles in the legendary series. Oh, look Play at this. a variety of classic and nostalgic Pac-Man games. Start the game in the arcade. That's Eat cool. all the like Pac-Dots the while this escaping from the ghosts of, uh, in Pac-Man. The Namco Museum. Yes. The Become the invisible well, Super it's Pac-Man still Namco. and eat up all the fruit in Super Pac-Man. Watch out, Mill is taking your fruit in Pack and Pal. Pack and Pal. A grand adventure to send a lost fairy <laughs> back to Fairyland in Pac-Land. Mm-hmm. Jump to Pac-Land. dodge the ghosts and run through the three-dimensional That's maze what I in Pac-Mania. That they had. The first Please puzzle game jumping. in the Pac-Man series, Pack Attack. <laughs> Help Pac Man get back home by using like, items uh, and skills to reach the door in time. In Pac in Time! Definitely. Play with a friend in this arrangement of the Pac Man series. Pac Man Arrangement Arcade Version. Pac-Man arrangement. A variety <laughs> of gimmicks will appear in the Pac Man Arrangement Console oh, Version. What? Play oh, Time Attack to compete for the high score with overwhelming speed. In Pac Man Championship yeah. Edition. Knock the enemies me. off the stage. Up to four players can play in Pac Motos. Oh, roll Pac Man, collect the Pac Dots, and aim for the gold in cool. Pac and Roll yeah. Remix. A lot of these, uh, Up to four players can play. Who is the strongest Pac Man yeah, in Pac Man Battle Royale? Oh, yeah, Keep running Battle and Royale. avoiding yeah, the ghosts. Him. Up to four players can join in Pac Man 256. The more you play, the more missions you'll unlock, and the more okay. coins you'll earn. You can use your coins to play arcade games, or you can spend them to customize your arcade. Let's put it in. Okay, that's kind of cool. They feel like a little. Um, Release your pack passion in the Museum Plus. Animal Crossing kind of Pac Man Museum Plus. Area. Right. That looks cool. Yeah, that was cool. I'm I'm excited for that. That that looks really fun. I'll, I'll sink a lot of time into that. Trust me. Yeah, it's coming out for PlayStations. Okay, great. Yeah, everything. I, I might have to look into that because yeah. I really <laughs> I missed the Pac-Man games. 
All right. Next up, we have Nino Cooney Crossworlds, and this is for one PC, iOS, and Android. Oh, you like this? I mean, it's level five in Studio G. <laughs> Pretty well known. I can't believe this is on a system. <sighs> yeah, they've been doing a lot of things. It might make its way to uh, Xbox and PlayStation. I feel like anything will end up on the Switch. I mean, this looks cool. I mean, it looks like a Studio Ghibli movie. That's for sure. <laughs> Legendary train begin. Ghibli. No, no adventure, no adventure game of this caliber is complete without dragons. So that's going to be. That's very true. <laughs> Very, very true. And so that's interesting. I, I can't say that I'm in the in the mood or uh, I'm shopping for an MMO to play, but it looks interesting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and last but not least, we go to the roller derby with roller champions. Okay. This one. first time you set foot on the ring, chances are no escape. you're gonna life. flop. But that's fine. Practice makes perfect, right? Here are a few tips to help you roll up to glory. I just hope they don't move the hell out of this game. Gather six players on the starting line, pick up the ball, and pass four gates around the rink to trigger them and open up the goal. Then take aim, shoot, and score. Still with me? It looks fun. Good. Because here comes the tricky part. The more laps you complete before you score, the more points you'll put on the board. First team to five points rolls away with the win. I like that. When you drop the ball, trust Add me, some you will. To it. Get it back before the other team or else you'll lose your gate count and they will be on the offensive. Good thing there are no holds barred. When on defense, tackle your opponents with all you've got and do what it takes to get the ball back. When your team has possession, time your jukes, fake out oncoming threats, Remember to pass the ball and practice good spacing. Be creative and mix a few moves together. Hump down a ramp to draw kick the ball carrier at full speed from their blind side, or pass the ball off the wall when you're in a tight spot. Heck, even leverage a nearby teammate to pop a double jump and soar high towards the goal. And if you just want to practice, hit the skate park to perfect those moves without any pressure. Now that you've got the basics, yeah, you're fun. ready for the this real really thing. <laughs> First, quick matches pair you with equally skilled players for a casual game. Custom matches let you okay. fiddle with the participants of both teams, bots, maps, and shared voice chat, giving you more freedom or the basic ingredients for a friendly tournament. Limited time modes will throw various curveballs at you to keep the formula fresh and exciting. Lastly, ranked matches give you the opportunity to climb the ladder down from the gutters of your garage league all the way up to the prestigious rank of champion. And of course, anywhere you roll, you'll want to roll in with style. Really King up with tons of outfits, titles, and banners. Show off with countless emotes all to gold of what effects. You'll unlock about more and more as you play, earn fans, game? and complete in-game sponsor challenges. There's even more exciting stuff on the seasonal roller pass. Go for the free track packed with goodies, or get access to the premium track to unlock the sweetest gear, including legendary oh superstar okay. outfits. So now go get him, champion, and whenever you hit the ring, keep one okay. thing in mind. You've got what it takes to roll up to glory. All right. Okay. I, I can do that. I, yeah, yeah, I'll definitely. That'll be fun to play. Yeah, for a while, too. This is Roller Champions, free to play, PS4, Xbox One, and PC. All right. Again. I'm with it. Again, I'm surprised it's not Switch. That, that's shocking to me. Later, I guess. <laughs> I guess I don't know. You know what? I feel like 
there's a I don't know something's going on with Switch. Maybe it's just the game is the, or the console is not technically you know up to date or something. Something's going ma- on. Look, this is already a last gen system. Yeah, you know what I'm saying game. like you can't de- look. They got The Witcher three and Outer Worlds running. Around. Apex is on Switch if I'm, I'm correct. Yeah. So there, yeah, there is no excuse for terrible. for a game company for a system that's been out five years. It's been five years. Five years, yeah, and it's literally the top selling system in this. Well, I don't know, generation, but the top selling system period right now. <laughs> right, you're telling me that you can't find a way to put that game on it, right? Especially, you know, Switch Two is is already in the in the rumor bills, yeah, and they're talking 2024. So it's kind of like at this point, everything. If it's gonna be on Switch, it should be releasing like day one with the rest. It of the should. Consoles. Now, I am not a game developer. I do not have a technical yeah, knowledge to develop games. Ups. So I don't know how difficult it is. I'm only looking at it as a consumer and seeing what these companies right. do. And people leave a lot of money on the table when it comes to the Switch for no good reason. Now, I agree with that. But I could also see I could also see Nintendo making it a little bit more difficult for developers to put their games on there. But I mean, you just think about it like Switch, they, they tend to be a more of an in-house company like if you if they can't buy you and say that we own you and like this is a, a nintendo exclusive title it's, it's i don't know it's it's iffy if you could get on there but it's just me looking at it from a consumer standpoint i got you but ubisoft needs money <laughs> so i don't <laughs> see do. why this is doing right Switch, whatever they need splits they need to, make, to make it happen they, they need, need money right so and you have a hundred plus million systems and a potential all you look for a system like that, all you need, you only need 10% of that user base to download it. Anything colorful and bright will get and a 1% kid. to buy stuff. Right. <laughs> like realistically, come on now. When so, you have that large of a user base, your your return, your conversion rate doesn't have to be as high. It really does. Especially, yeah, with it being on the other platforms as well. Like, yeah, exactly. Just exactly. just look at the switches, extra extra coins to come in. It don't have to be your main bread and butter. It, exactly, and it seems like a game that would fit well for the sort of the switch demographic. Yeah, I agree. Especially being that this is uh, the switch is also a handheld console. Exactly, I think people take that for granted like a lot. They don't. You've never if you've never. <laughs> all the real gamers would know like traveling with the, a playstation or xbox right it's not the easiest task especially when you have to get on a plane and mm-hmm. your, your your console can't just fit in a carry-on which means you have to do a check bag because the extra weight is going to make it like oh no they want to charge you extra but get these games don't have that vcr xbox one <laughs> right, right, <laughs> right 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 get these games on on a on a on a switch yeah like, I, I don't know anybody who play who anybody who owns a switch i never obviously i rarely rarely see them playing in a dock mode i rarely. play it on dock mode i play it on dock mode when when there's titles that are specific for dock mode mm-hmm. like for example they've done things with pokemon where it's like Playing it handheld is one experience. Playing it on the dock offers you some kind of extra things to it. So if if it's something like that, or if I just you know you know switch screen is small compared to the TV I have in my right. room. So if I'm home and I'm just like I just want to relax and have a good time, I'll put it on the dock or whatever. But most of the time I'm I'm if I'm on the go, I'm carrying that with me just in my case, so I can just whip it out and play it. But I don't know. I guess the developers will they'll catch up by the time um, Microsoft starts announcing Xbox um, mobile and no, they don't need to do that PlayStation anymore. brings back the PS Vita and stuff. That won't be happening. That, that, that <laughs> neither one of those are happening, especially with XCloud. My, Microsoft has no reason to bring out a mobile platform ever again or ever appears since they never have. And <laughs> Sony, Sony, yeah. Even though I think, <laughs> interesting to say, I think something like the Vita mm-hmm. was just ahead of its time. It was. It did. Also, Sony wanted to make everything proprietary, too. Especially with, well, I'm thinking more of the PSP with the memory cards, which the memory cards were always trash. Damn. And they're always more expensive than a regular SD card. Yeah. But even with the, the PS, the, the Vita, the quality that you got for a handheld, 
I think that now if they brought out something comparable to the Switch, which mm-hmm. it really could be, mm-hmm. I at a, at a reasonable price point. Now, Sony is not one for bringing things out in a reasonable price point. That's their biggest <laughs> right. uh, downfall <laughs> um, in, in that regard. And I think that's partially their whole handheld marketing was it wasn't compared to the what Nintendo offered. Like you, you couldn't compare game wise, and then you had to be higher in price. Yes, I know you had better quality, quote unquote. But it's Nintendo. Right. Nobody's out handheld Nintendo. And look at the Switch. I just think that if Sony had it stuck with it, they could be in a better position now to really compete, especially if they have a system that's comparable from a handheld um, aspect to the Switch. A lot of those games that are big on the Switch could have easily been ported over to a Sony handheld. And, Absolutely. You know, you could have had some sort of synergy there as far as companies could have put in games on one or the other and, and gotten some even more money uh, from a handheld system. <coughs> I agree. So, but that's my, my take on that. Uh, <laughs> Roller Champions looks fun. I'll be playing that. And Pac Man, I'm still playing Truck Yomi. It's, it's been an interesting past few days. So I haven't gotten a chance. <laughs> also, I'm stuck on a boss. So I keep getting right there. <laughs> And that's, then she kills me. Do it right there. So, you know, like sometimes you got to go back and like wait a couple of days, like, okay, got it. Kill her and then go. Let me tell you though, the turn that game takes. I think it's week three. I've been talking about Trek to Yomi. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a good game. It, it is. It is. Look, if y'all not playing that game, play that game. It's $20. Okay. Oh, They're not paying me. I'm not getting a kickback. That game <laughs> really fun play it buy it seriously that's all Please. I'm saying. so brian what's going on with you this week <laughs> um another episode look i'm on the wrong side talk play blur cast um a few things it's, it's been quiet but i think game is going to take a majority of the uh, episode this week um because marvel just announced a new game for mobile which i'm interested in the what was it multiverses game we talked about last week yes the warner brothers more, game, more yeah. news coming out about that yeah so probably going to be discussing more gaming on the podcast okay. this week but that's pretty much it i'm excited for this Rolex champions game yeah. now so i have to figure out a way to incorporate that it's, i like that they are bringing back these old games like i still play um the dodgeball game that just came out oh, yeah, knockout. yeah that's, that's what this reminded me of so i i wasn't yeah. a big fan of that but i did play it when it was on game pass and mm-hmm. you know it was fun it, it definitely wasn't something i would play all the time right but definitely i saw the, the pick up and play sort of versatility and fun of it. <laughs> um it's not something i would have purchased i'll put it that way yeah um, well i think i think it's going free to play now so if you interested, oh, okay yeah because um i believe I believe it is free to play, if I'm not mistaken. But I know Fall Guys is going free to play. Yes, that is going free to play, yeah. Another one that's very, very fun. See, all of these cool games, like, yeah. Right. But, yeah, that's my week. <laughs> all right. And then, you know, we got a checkpoint coming out, too. Yes, yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, let's see. Man, my week is jam-packed. Uh, rec- right now, it's out. is episode 110 of the Satorian Geek Podcast, the time of this recording, where... I am talking about NBA 2K's download, uh, spotlighting, grow man, logic podcast, mm-hmm. as well as talking about in the tutorial slice. What is seersucker for all of you gentlemen and ladies yes. who are always like, what's seersucker? So and I give an explanation so breakdown of that. Uh, the fragrance of the week is Sweet Taboo by Chris Collins. Uh, so that's out now. I'll be recording episode 111. I'm also on the Wisdom app, which is a new broadcasting app. I am doing Sartorial Sundays every Sunday. I don't have a time where I talk about the inspirations for my fragrances of the week. And also, I just started a Patreon. So find me on Webster Style if you want to be a producer of the show. <laughs> yeah right i and yeah um your recaps for halo are not making me want to <laughs> jump into okay let me let me tell you this okay <laughs> i'm a halo fan so uh, yes, i are. am i am somewhat versed in the lore at least from the games mm-hmm. it deviates especially last it deviates a lot but if you heard me i gave them a lot of latitude you the did. last three episodes some of it is my own personal convictions because there's certain things that happen between Chief and McKee, which you weren't feeling. 
I don't feel that in most movies in TV shows. So <laughs> yeah. part of it is that because it most of the time it does need to happen to illustrate the sort of emotion that they want. And literally, I was talking to my wife the other day about this, and I said, there's only one, I mean, absolutely one movie that I felt like, and that's in the past 20, 30 years, I felt like that was needed. One, and Halle well, Berry got an Oscar for it. I put it that were. way. <laughs> that's the only one that, like, oh, this makes sense. I understand why this happened. I understand why this is part, of, like, it moves the story along. I get it. The Halo series, it doesn't. And, like, look, for all y'all, this isn't <laughs> Halo's video game latest. So I'll say this. For all y'all who, who are interested, it's not a bad watch, okay? Okay. If you're a Halo fan like me, it's going to get on your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> but they can rectify it. They can yeah, rectify it. I heard promise in your voice. I heard promise. Look, if 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 they <laughs> if they do the fall of reach, they can wipe all that away. <laughs> okay. Okay. It, it, it give them a whole new start. Whole new start with the storyline. It's like you, you oh, but I'm looking forward to season two because if they do get the halo, that means they get the flood. Yeah. That means you have the fall of reach. Like there's so many things that is I, I equate Halo like Doctor Who. Doctor Who, they are especially doing the tenant run, they talked about their fixed points in time. Right. Everything else can change, but their fixed points in time you can't change. The fall of reach, in my opinion, is a fixed point in time. You mm -hmm. cannot change that and call this series Halo. That's mm -hmm. just the way I feel. That is the fall of reach is such an integral part <laughs> to the story mm -hmm. of Halo going forward to getting to the actual Halo ring. And then with that. You got the flood being released. Spoilers for a 20 plus year old game if you haven't played Halo 1. <laughs> so, so I'm just saying they can they can course correct. It's okay. just at the end of the day, Hollywood. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You nice. do not need to make changes to a property which has sold a hundred plus million games in 20 <laughs> years as so plenty of books and as an established lore you right. don't have to make drastic changes to try to make it appeal to to a wider audience it 100 plus games is already a wider audience right <laughs> like there's already a built-in fan base with halo like anybody me who's on right <laughs> anybody who um happens to access the free trial for paramount plus is one of the first things you're going to see on there like we don't need to do all these things to the story to make it like accessible to people who don't know anything it's sci-fi look if you're right. on paramount plus let's be real you're there for star trek and probably hit, most of the people are probably there for star trek i mean that's the only reason i'm still there star trek okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good reason and also as of today sonic 2 is on there so we gotta watch that because we ain't kissing oh, right, right, right. but that. Most people in there are going to be sci-fi heads anyway, in, right. in my opinion. I may be wrong. I don't know their demographics. They're using no, numbers. Uh... But I'm pretty sure in the circles I run in and I look at the internet, a lot of people on Paramount Plus because of sci-fi, particularly Star Trek. So these are people who are going to gravitate to a series like that anyway. Halo is not a horrible series. Not it's in the least not. bit. And they have the benefit of it being such a, a iconic staple in the gaming community. Right. So whereas like myself i've never played a halo maybe a few minutes here and there on a friend's console but i've never played the full story for myself right i still know what exactly. Halo is who who master chief is and i don't know anything about the lore so it's like you have that benefit of it being rooted in the gaming community and everybody in the gaming community knows halo because exactly it's literally so the why change it yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the, the game that put Xbox on the map for the most part. The best thing they did with that series, and we're going to close this out because I can talk about this for a while. <laughs> if you want to hear more, check me out on my podcast. Right. But the fact that Jen Taylor is Cortana, she's actually playing Cortana as a voice of Cortana. I just, I get goosebumps every time she's on screen. <laughs> like, it's just, like, it's Cortana. It's Cortana. Ah! I mean, just the fact it's like, it's really from the game. It's like, that's just, like, the fact that they had the werewolf all to do that always gives right. me hope because like that's the smartest decision they made with this whole series great casting right great casting so we are uh, obviously <laughs> at nerds uh where nerds rule the world you can find us here on youtube which is where you are right now find us on twitter at the nrw find us on instagram at new Reads wednesday and of course you're on youtube so like share and subscribe
hit the bell. <laughs>